Most instrumentation and electrical technicians make about $80,000 a year, but in some situations, we can make 100,000 or even up into the mid or upper six figures. Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about that. I'm gonna share some data, some real numbers. I'm gonna talk about my paychecks. I'm gonna talk about what it takes to be a high paid technician. And I wanna tell you guys the sacrifices that I make. Is it worth it? What does it feel like? All that stuff. I just wanna be real with you guys and you know, share with you what how I feel about my career and my lifestyle so that you can make an educated decision if you want to do this too. This week I worked 48 hours and for me that's considered a light work week. Uh, the week before I worked 60 or maybe 64 I don't remember. So on those day these those weeks when I'm working 64 hours I mean that's over seven days. I'm going to work seven days a week and then if I got the next week, you know, I go 12 days in a row. Generally speaking, I go 12 days in a row twice a month. That's a lot of hours. Um, it'd be an absolute nightmare if you hated your job. Fortunately for me, I definitely don't hate the job. I don't get any anxiety going in. Uh, sometimes when my shift's over, I don't really feel like leaving. I'm just kind of neutral. Like, I love being at home. I have a, a son. He's very fun to play with. I, I love my home life. But... I don't hate my job. I, I really don't mind being there. And if I was single, I'd probably work more, to be honest with you. But realistically, it does kind of suck. And here's why. I really got to plan out my weekends and schedule things in advance. I can't just go on a road trip on a whim. I mean, I'm working most of the days out of the year. And that definitely is a sacrifice that sucks a little bit. I try not to let my job steal memories and live in life from me. So as a result, uh, I don't sleep as much. I am a single income family here with my wife and my son, and I'm definitely able to comfortably support us on that income, which is great. And then she doesn't have to work so she can spend more time with our son. And I just, I enjoy being able to support my wife so that she can live a more comfortable lifestyle and she doesn't have to work if she doesn't want to. Working this way, I can build a uh, future and a ret retirement more quickly and I will not have to work as long as most people. That's my expectation and goal. After I got out of school, I spent most of my career in that sixty to $90,000 range. I first walked, worked in water utilities, then I worked in manufacturing. I never really worked much overtime, just a little bit here and there. So I've did that for about like six years. And I did notice throughout those years, the wages have gone up. So when I came out, 28 or 30 an hour was a pretty normal starting wage. And now that number is closer to about 35 an hour. So for you guys, I would probably expect when you get out of school to make around that, maybe 80 grand would be a realistic expectation. But what you want to do is you want to build your skill set, build your resume, get a little bit of experience, and then you can go out and find a more in-demand job. For me, I don't work in the chemical or oil and gas industry, but I do have a union job. I'm in manufacturing and we have a union contract that specifies that we can pretty much work as much overtime as we want. And also when I work on Sundays, I get double time. So for me, that's how I was able to get a high wage job. For example, instead of working your normal five day week, you decide to work a seven day week. So you work eight hours Monday through Friday. That's your 40. Then you work eight hours on Saturday. That time and a half is actually going to be like 12 hours. And then if you work 12 on Sunday, so that's a 60 hour week, six, eight, and a 12, that 12 hours is double time and it will count as 24 hours. So in a 60 hour week, you'll actually get uh, paid for 76 hours of base pay. So by doing things like that once in a while, you can really boost up your income. And basically what I do is every other week I, I get paid pretty much double. So my two week pay is really like a three week pay. And because I'm a little bit experienced, I've been able to bring my base salary up to right around a hundred thousand dollars. And on my small weeks, I try to work four to eight hours of overtime. So I pretty much work 48 or 60 hours a week. And uh, yeah, man, I spend a lot of time at work. So how realistic is a six-figure base salary? 
Uh, I'm going to have to look that up on ChatGPT and print the numbers up on the board here. But I would say it's relatively realistic. I think um, 40 to $45 an hour has become pretty standard, uh, especially if you have a little bit of experience. So let's say you're at 40. Uh, that's 83K, I believe. And if you're at 45, that's something like 94K. Plus, every company does a yearly bonus. So it's going to put you right around like 80 to, to 100 is pretty standard. Then if you just work a little bit of overtime, it's pretty easy to get up into the low six figures. And if you do what I do, you can get up into the mid six figures. If you do what some of my buddies do, you can get up to 200,000 and above. But the real question is, how hard was it for me to get that six figure job with unlimited overtime where I can make 150,000 a year if I want to? And the answer is pretty easy. Like I said, I'm in a medium cost of living state. I'm not in like California or something. I'm in Ohio. Yes, I have my associate's degree and I have a little bit of job experience, but realistically, I'm not even a great candidate. And that's because I did do a little bit of job hopping over the last few years, which shows employers that you're unstable and it really doesn't make you a great candidate. So because I kind of jumped around jobs a couple times in the last years, last couple years, I'm really not a good candidate and I was able to get that job. And realistically, my company is hiring right now and we're having trouble finding someone. So the jobs are definitely in demand and those higher paying jobs are definitely out there. Now, before you go and jump into getting your associate's degree in engineering technology or the like, uh, you want to ask yourself a couple questions. Do you live in an area where there's factories? Are there opportunities in your area to fix machines? So you definitely need factories in your area if you don't want to move. So. You know, if you live out in the middle of nowhere and there's no factories anywhere near you, this is not the career for you. But if you're in a big city with at least some factories or, you know, water utilities, power companies, this is definitely a great career to get into. The job that I'm at is a higher paying job and I'm able to work all this overtime with bonuses and whatnot. Is it more difficult than a lower paying job? And the answer is absolutely not. When I was working at Nestle, that job was way harder than I, the job I have now. Granted, there was a little bit more instrumentation and calibration than where I'm at now. My calibrations are pretty basic, but the job I have now is easier than my Nestle job, which is nice because I can actually work more hours without getting exhausted. So what is the cost of making 150K plus a year as an instrumentation electrical technician? The real cost is sleep and vacations. That's it. Um, personally, I really don't mind my job. I'm there just about every day, but guess what? I'm also home just about every day. On the days I work 12 hours, I only spend about five hours with my family. But on most days when I work eight hours, I spend eight, nine, 10 hours with my family. And um, for me, it works for now. And uh, but just know it's not for everyone. You know, factories are dirty. They're industrial. The people are gritty, but you know what? It's a challenging, exciting environment, and you're gonna see some crazy machines and some crazy stuff that you never even heard about, thought about, or would have imagined you would have seen in your whole life. Uh, for me, I give it two thumbs up. Uh, I can't think of an easier way uh, to get to a six-figure income than going and getting a two-year degree. That's just my personal opinion. I've always loved this career. I've always pushed this career on my channel because I want you guys to experience what I've experienced, and that is uh, financial freedom, uh, definitely the opportunities to support not only myself, but my family and build a bright future. I've found a career that I personally really enjoy. And uh, I just hope you guys can find the same thing for yourself, whether it's this career or something else.